What's up everybody? And today is going to be the final video of the head gasket installed finally after we got everything in. So we're going to show the new air intake system that I'm putting on it. It is from Banks. We're going to be showing how the fuel lines are routed for the new CP3 and we'll show you everything finished and hopefully I'll show you it running. Uh, it may not start with the CP3 conversion just because he doesn't have it tuned for it yet. And if it doesn't start, he's going to take it and get it tuned. Uh, I won't be able to show that on video just because he's taking it somewhere else closer to his house and he does live about an hour away from me. But I want to show you everything that I did, all the torque specs for everything and all that good stuff and i'll even put all that stuff in the description below and i will put a link to all the parts and the kits and everything from everywhere that we got all the parts from just so y'all can get the same kit that i'm using on this so you know the detailed instructions of this right here but like i said first thing we're going to be doing is i'm going to be doing some of the switching over of the sensors from the stock air box to the new banks uh, power ram air box so let's get on it first off this is the old k and m air filter you can see right here you can tell it's pretty dirty and it does all right for a stock filter i mean it may give you a little bit better airflow than factory but that's about it i think this may come with a factory can in cannot remember but like i said this one right here is seen its day here is the factory box right here we do have to remove this sensor and that sensor and put it in the new one but here is the new one i've already attached it to the actual uh, lid right there and it's just a hose clamp it holds it in and it just attaches and it has an outline right here which way uh, it should go so it's pretty pretty foolproof but the first thing we're going to do is remove these sensors uh, one looks like a torch and one looks like an allen head on that and both of those are Phillips heads so let me grab some tools real quick You may be able to hear my fan in the background if it's a little loud, sorry about that. It's a little warm today. Like I said, these two sensors are, well these two bolts on this sensor are just a Phillips head. Be careful with it and we'll sit it down where it doesn't get hit or anything mm, that is a small one actually may not so that one torx bit is a t20 go ahead and yank it out real quick I mean, it shouldn't be real tight. Because they are only going into plastic, by the way. Let me get my Allen wrenches. And this will give me a chance to use my new set anyway, kind of break them in. It's two and a half. So that's everything we need off of this one. I think the kit comes with gaskets. Okay. Here's the lower box right here. Do not put this together before you put it in because you're going to have to bolt it down. And these holes right there. And I will show me putting that in as well. Alright, here's all the bolts and everything you need. 
here's the gasket this will only go in one way the sensor should be facing the top of it like the connector it's going to slide it in and it does come with new bolts or screws I should say Alright guys, I did uh, have the screws backwards. I flipped them and tried to redo the screws to see if they would go in a different way. And the smaller screws go into the actual way the filter goes and the max sensor actually gets longer. But we got that in there now and we do not have a filter indicator. So we put the plug in here just so we don't have to worry about that. Alright, so as you can see right here, we have all of this right here out already because we did take the air box out when we did the head gaskets and here are your brackets right here this is the short one this is the long one and as you can see it's slotted so they go in right there and over there so you can put them in loosely and whenever you do that it gives you some wiggle room okay as you can see we got them in now uh, make sure that they are both the opening faces towards the engine I did have this one on the wrong way so I flipped it around and now what we're going to do is set the actual air box in and it will only go in one way and as you can see the holes aren't lining up right here so that's why they made them adjustable so what we're going to do is we're going to slide them and get them to where they'll uh, bolt in right here so let me slide them and get them bolted in and i'll bring you right back okay we got them bolted in about where they need to go and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to Get underneath there and i'm going to tighten up the little 10 millimeters on the bottom just so that we can have it in the correct place i'm gonna have to do this from underneath except for this side i'm gonna have to go in over here which that's not really a big deal but it can get a little aggravating i'm just going to actually tighten down the front one as tight as I can get and then I'll take the box back out and tighten down the back one I'll just make it a little easier all right I got it tightened up now and I'm using a 10 millimeter with a lot of extensions well not really a lot but with some extensions and a swivel or universal whichever one you want to call it so I can get in there especially to this back one as that one is a little close to the back of the box as you can tell and you don't have to crank down on these all that tight because it is just a plastic housing come on get on there but and there are a few different uh, locations that you can bolt this to. And if you feel better about it, you can put a washer underneath it. That is in there. Let me go get my hose clamps and the actual filter and lid. And we'll set it down in here and make sure that everything fits right. Uh, the ram horn is already on there here is the gasket or connector right there you can see got it up on there right now uh, I just got to put a hose clamp around that tighten it up and that one will be on and then we'll put the elbow on there and get her all situated all right so we got the filter in there. You need to take this cross brace that goes from here to there. That's what it looks like. These are the instructions. The instructions are pretty good on this kit, actually. Uh, a lot of times uh, you'll get instructions on stuff like this, and it may seem pretty straightforward, but it's not. And this one right here gives you good pictures. Uh, they're not colored or anything, but that doesn't matter. I mean, it kind of shows you everything. The little pictures and it gives you a whole list of 
things to do but we got the lid in and there's four Phillips head screws right here here there and there and they screw in and then I like to orientate my hose clamps all the same way just so it looks clean and looks factory and it looks a lot better than if you just have them one on top one on bottom you know vice versa whatever but now we have everything in like I said normally a filter gauge would go here it tells you when you need to change your filter but this one doesn't have one so we just plug it up and it did come with the plug now what we can do is actually attach the wires the connectors are on all of it's put together I don't see any hard bends it all seems tight it's not going anywhere so that's basically your install for one of these banks ram air I didn't see one online that covered this particular engine and uh, air intake system they had this also can be purchased with a ram horn the horn comes from the bottom right here and comes down and swoops under and draws in more cold air uh, the customer didn't want that one so we he opted out of that i didn't purchase it he did purchase it and have it sent to my place for me to install but that is basically putting this on uh, now I'm going to show you how I routed my fuel lines because I did delete the fuel filter over here and he didn't need it because he does have an air dog system here is the fuel line right here it goes in and I had to tee it in right here come with this T with a little elbow that goes to the fuel rail and then that goes directly into the injection pump and then here's your fuel lines back here and then the metal line comes in back here and there is a plug I don't know if you can see it right under that right there that's where that plug goes but we are closing in on starting it up it's pretty much together i just have a few connectors i gotta make uh, i gotta put the coolant reservoir in and then i need to tighten up the boost clamp put coolant in it uh change the fuel filters and put the inner fenders on there and she will be done but let me go ahead and put the coolant reservoir in and start putting coolant in it and tighten up this boost hose it goes to this one right here is the one that attaches to the intercooler but let me tighten up the rest of this stuff and get it all ready to at least try to start and see what happens all right so we did have one little coolant leak i fixed it it was the new gasket on the side of the turbo but we got that fixed it's not leaking anymore i had to take the bolt out and clean the threads a little bit better and put it in and torque it back down and she cleared right up with no issues we have the air intake on as you can see everything's hooked up coolant is full we did let it run for a while it got up to about 180 degrees and the the hoses aren't really warm yet but it does have some diesel knocking going on in a couple of the injectors but that is to be expected with the cp3 install because it does need to be tuned and i advised him to uh, have it towed to have it tuned at the place that way he's not driving it with diesel knock and i'd rather him not do that just for fear of messing something else up but i'm going to clean up some of these wires and stuff and get them all out of the way so there's nothing really touching anything that's hot make sure everything's good to go and all that good stuff but this is going to conclude 
the diesel project. Took a little longer than we wanted it to just for the fact that we had to get some parts in and he wanted to do a couple other little things while we had it which was going to be easier to do while we had it to apart as well but like i said i'm going to put up a clip of it running i do have about a 20 second clip of it running and just to show you that it is going good and just show that it would start up i did have to prime it because uh, change the fuel filters the he does have an air dog system as I stated before and there it is right there and we did change the filters we went ahead and let it prime for a good minute or two just to make sure that she had fuel coming up but it took probably about 15 revolutions and she fired right up no check engine lights no warning lights or any of that stuff so she was a, she was a success if i can talk today but we had to let it prime for a couple minutes or two just to make sure it fed the injection pump and got it up to where it needed to be but everything went good on it uh i know it took a little longer than we wanted it to but i'd rather make sure everything was good to go and in there correctly than to rush it to just try to get it out the door but this is going to conclude the series if you enjoyed the series please like subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that's coming uh, i do have about five or six videos already uh, edited and everything so you'll see more content coming and i promise everybody there will be more colorado project content coming soon i uh, just have to finish a couple cars and I'm probably going to take a week or two off just to work on the Colorado for everybody and to kind of get the frame going just to make me feel better as well. But like I said, if y'all enjoyed the content, hit all the buttons and until next time, y'all have a great day.